you know, the United States has built up a large military and uh, President Obama, well, Reagan built it up to the probably the its peak strength, you know, in terms of numbers, ship numbers, um, divisions of, you know, soldiers, etc. Now, you know, technology has has improved over the years. You know, we have high Mars weapon systems, etc. But personnel numbers have gone down. Ship numbers have gone down. America hasn't built a new nuclear weapon since 1992, whereas the Russians and the Chinese, um, well, the Russians are well ahead of us in nukes, both in their numbers and their modern, you know, their their uh, modern technology. And the Chinese are catching up fast. And we've got to get rid of the idea that we might get in a war with Russia or we might get in a war with China. It will be both, guaranteed, plus Iran, plus Cuba, plus Venezuela, plus Nicaragua, um, and maybe several other countries as well, including South Africa, for instance, which is completely under communist control these days. So... The U.S. military-industrial complex is the only thing that is keeping us free right now. And the problem is it's now run by generals like General Milley, who would be better off being a, a sociology professor at Princeton or something, you know, left-wing General Milley. You know, Obama did the, the, the worst damage did that Obama did to the United States was purging almost 200 Patriotic admirals, um, com, you know, admirals and and generals from the U.S. military during his term of office, and replacing them with Princeton sociology graduates, woke generals, woke admirals who have zero idea of the real threats we're facing in the world. While well, Russia and China are getting ready for World War Three, you know, our top brass is getting ready for global warming. They're all worried about global warming and equity and, di and diversity and LGBTQ agendas, etc. All of it is just total Marxist subversion. And they are putting that ahead of American national security. You think about this, if you were Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin, and your aim was to destroy the United States. And believe me, that is their aim. They've written about it and talked about it so many times. It's unbelievable that anyone would even question that. Their aim is to destroy the United States. When would you want to do it? Would you want to do it while we have basically a traitor in the White House, an agent of, you know, someone who's worked in Russia, China, and Iran's interests his entire career? when the U.S. military has been gutted with COVID, COVID uh, mandates, when uh, tens of thousands of good officers have been purged from the military and uh, you know pushed out through political correctness and all of these things, when would you want to go? Would you want to wait till a President Trump or a President DeSantis gets into power and starts rebuilding the U.S. military and getting things back on track and purging the political correctness, or would you want to do it right now in the next year and a half before we have a chance to get a new president? What would you do if you were Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin? It's pretty darn obvious what they would do, and that's why they're trying to do it. And uh, it's my contention, I've said this on the program many times, and I get a lot of pushback for it, that the only reason we're not already in World War Three and that we're not already losing is the fact that the Ukrainian people have proven a heck of a lot tougher than Vladimir Putin bargained for. And so the 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 only way we're going to avoid World War Three is basically by defending Ukraine, giving Ukraine what it wants, what it needs to defeat the Russians and, and push the agenda back. Uh, and I say before, this is what was supposed to happen, in my opinion. Russia was supposed to attack Ukraine, take Ukraine in three to seven days, establish power over Ukraine, conscript Ukrainians into the Russian army, be right on the border of Poland and Moldova, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, all these NATO countries, and then basically say, if you don't disband NATO, 
we are going to nuke several capitals in Europe. And I think NATO would have folded at that point because I don't think Joe Biden would have done much about it. And so that's and in the and at the same time Xi would have attacked into the Pacific. And I don't believe he's going to attack Taiwan. I believe he's going to attack the west coast of the United States, Hawaii, etc. And at the same time, I think the Russian forces in the Far East, where Russia has some of its best military, they're not throwing their best into the Ukraine war. They're keeping them in reserve for attacking America across the Bering Strait, down into Alaska, down into through Canada, um, to attack the the you know, northern states of America, Idaho, Montana, Washington, etc. And Iran was, of course, getting ready to attack the Middle East, and North Korea is getting ready to attack the, um, ready to attack the uh, South Korea. Yeah.